With Firefight now out for Halo 3 ODST for both PC and console, many new and old players will be coming back to experience the Firefight that started a fan favorite. However, I understand that many players will not understand the placement of weapons and careful positioning. In this video, I will be showing you how to position yourself properly in all of ODST's Firefight maps, as well as show you where power weapons are and they, how they should be used. I know I did a tier list describing all of ODST's weapons and their use, but many maps hide the power weapons very well and learning where they are and how to use them for each map will not only help your team, but make these rounds really easy for yourself. One thing to note is that this is very much a guideline for heroic firefight in MCC, meaning most times you won't be communicating with your teammates, teammates may be trying to grieve or kill you, hog the power weapons, or go AFK and or leave the match. The two most necessary skills for learning is firstly, your weapon knowledge, which I made a tier list video about, and secondly, learning the maps, which I'll be teaching you now. Let's get started with the first map, Alpha Sight. The power weapons you get on Alpha Sight is a sniper rifle, shotgun, and a rocket launcher. The sniper rifle and shotgun are being hung up on the wall here and here, close to the spawn, whereas the rocket launcher is on the opposite side of the building right here. More ammo for the sniper can be located on the right platform under the right phantom, and more rocket ammo can be found on the left side under the left phantom. Your pistol ammo and SMG ammo is located on the closest wall when you spawn, so if you spawn on the left side, it'll be on your left, and if you spawn on the right, it'll be on the right with medkeds located inside spawn and beside your weapon cache. The way you play this map is dependent on your ally's skill and dodging abilities. If your team is able to consistently hit headshots, position yourself around these pillars, preferably away from other teammates, and start taking down as many grunts and jackals as you can while dodging grenades and checking on the platform you're not watching, you'll be doing great. If you notice that brutes and grunts are starting to overwhelm your pillar position, stick to the middle area and start taking out the brutes as they come charging in. If you see drones, try and take out as many as you can while falling back to the middle or running to spawn to grab an SMG or pistol. Once brute chieftains start landing, try and take out as many shields as possible and consider falling back towards spawn as the chieftains will most likely charge you. And since that middle area has no cover, sticking to the walls where the shotgun and sniper are are a great way to avoid incoming fire, or worse, fuel rod brutes. It should go without saying that it should be a 2 in 2 system. Two people watch the left, two people watch the right. Look around at your teammates from time to time for possible signs that may be starting to fall back, such as bugs or chieftain spawning, or you start to get shot at from the opposite side, as you do not want to have other platform enemies shooting or throwing grenades at you as there's already a limited amount of cover, so when all else fails, fall back to the middle, then fall back to spawn and continue with the 2 and 2 system. For using the power weapons, I would personally only use the rocket launcher or sniper if hunters show up if it's the last round of a set. Ignore the shotgun if you can, it really sucks. Realistically, a plasma pistol, pistol, uh, or SMG is all you need for the majority of the run. The power weapons you get on last exit is a sniper rifle on the left side hanging on this wall here and a rocket launcher on the right side of the wall with a turret station on both sides along the stairs leading to the top floor. Ammo for the rocket launcher can be found in the middle gazebo looking thing straight ahead from spawn. Your pistol and SMG ammo is located on both the main floor of where you spawned in and on the top floor both beside their retrospective doors with health kits being right behind you when you spawn in. The first thing you'll notice is that there are vents that can easily take you up to the top. These are one-way vents, so if you have to get down to the spawn area, you will have to jump down, but be careful as the jump down may damage you. Positioning isn't as important in this map as maybe certain other maps, as enemy spawns are quite far away and they can typically take a while to get to a position where they can even fire on you. Regardless, you can either do a 2-2 two two system where two people are on the ground and two people are firing from the stairs, a 1-1-1 one, one, one flex system where one person holds the left, middle, and right with a flex helping out whichever spawn is the most troubling. This map will randomly spawn ghosts on either the left side, right side, or more commonly the center part. While the ghost in the middle is nothing more than a nuisance that can be ignored, the ghosts on the left or right sides cannot be ignored and will damage your team heavily if not dealt with soon. You can also commandeer these ghosts as well and personally, I find them to be a huge grenade magnet with little room to move in. I would just destroy them, but that's up to your own personal interest. Do not use the mounted turrets. The turrets on the phantom will chew through you and by the time the phantom leaves, the enemies will usually be in range for throwing distance. Please, do not use the turrets on those stairs unless it's a must-have. 
For using the power weapons, I'd recommend not using the rocket launcher for ghosts, instead wait for hunters or last round. The reason is because for the left and right ghosts, you can just use a plasma pistol because they're pretty close to deal with, or the plasma pistol grenade combo. If the center ghost is ever giving you trouble, use the sniper rifle to snipe the driver out of the ghost. As a final note, the cars in the map can explode and will do damage to you if you're close to them, so just keep that in mind. The power weapons that are in security zone is a rocket launcher that is in this little side pocket right off of spawn. The Spartan laser is located on the left side of spawn on the bench here with a turret. And the sniper rifle is located on the right side of the spawn on this little bench here with another turret. There is a third and final turret at the center of the map right here. Ammo for the sniper can be located further down on another platform and is to the opposite side ammo for the rocket launcher here. There is also sniper ammo at the opposite side here. But it is so damn far away, I wouldn't even bother with it. Your SMG pistol ammo is located on the wall right next to this little side pocket here. This is one of my least favorite maps of all time. The map is so damn big and waves take forever to get started as well as two wraiths shooting at you with barely any cover. First thing to note is that enemies will not spawn in from the ground and instead always spawn out of a phantom. Noting this, the phantoms will either spawn driving slowly down the middle or drive at the back of the map. If they are driving to the back of the map, they will most likely be dropping off a Wraith, which can be seen on the bottom of a Phantom if it is carrying one. If you notice a Wraith is being deployed, destroying it as fast as you can with a Spartan laser will seriously help your team a lot. Fire on the lower center of the Wraith to one-shot it. If you shoot anywhere else, it will not one-shot it and you do not want to waste any more laser ammo. If you are unable to obtain a Spartan laser, use a plasma pistol to get close to it only when it is safe to do so. Do not attempt to destroy it if enemies just spawn, because if it is too much combined firepower for you to handle. If they are driving to the middle of the map, stay clear of the Phantom's guns and the grunt turret as they will rip you to shreds if you get too close. Use an SMG or sniper rifle to kill the grunt in the turret facing your team, as hitting the pistol headshot is extremely tricky to pull off and it's easier to just gun them down. Lastly, if your entire team is holding the highest part of the map, there's a good chance that some enemies will linger at the very bottom, usually hiding behind the Wraith. If you notice the next round is not progressing after dispatching most of your enemies, head down to the lower area and watch your quarters, because chances are, there's a Brood Squad just chilling down there waiting for you. Alright, that was a mouthful, now let's get into the positioning of your allies. Typically, you do not want to be any lower than that gun turret in the center there, because there is barely any cover, and the good chance of getting cornered, flanked, or damaged by that phantom turret is incredibly high. Instead, one pulse and hurl to the left with the laser, and the main focus should be getting those tanks and watching that flank. The two people in the middle should be holding off the main squads that spawn from the middle phantoms. The person on the right should be holding the right flag and using the sniper to only primarily snipe the Wraith turret gunners or snipe the turrets from the uh, from the Phantoms. While one Spartan laser should be enough, a lot can happen that can change that. Maybe two Wraiths spawn every round, maybe the guy who is using it isn't good at hitting the sweet spot, or maybe he dies and it despawns. Using the sniper on those turrets will help you a lot with destroying the Wraiths, but you have to kind of get close to him, it can be a pain to shoot him sometimes. The rocket launcher can be used as a last ditch effort to take on the tanks if you have to get closer, however I would personally just use them on the last wave, phantom turrets, grunt turrets, hunters, etc etc. As stated in the last exit part, it is unwise to use the turrets stationary as you will get peppered by the wraiths or phantom shots. Instead, use it on drones or last wave enemy. Personally, I would just avoid the center turret at all costs, it's just too exposed out. The covers that are out there will only block about 3-4 to four Wraith shots before coming down. Try and use them sparingly if you're needing to block a Wraith Mortar Fire or a Phantom Gun Turret. Last bit of info is that to always keep your eyes on the skies, not only to see where the enemy drops, but also know when a Wraith is going to come after you. The power weapons in Chasm 10 include a rocket launcher inside of the spawn area, two sniper rifles located on the second floor right near the doors here and here, there are four turrets in Chasm 10, two are right outside of spawn next to some cover, and two turrets are on the second floor right next to the ridge here and here. Sniper ammo can be located on the left or right side of the second floor next to the door that spawns enemies out of it. There is rocket ammo, just be cautious when approaching it. 
Your SMG pistol ammo is located right behind you on the spawn with a couple of medkits, and second set of them is located on the second floor right by the turrets I described, as well as some medkits located there too. Chasm 10 is an interesting map in a sense that it can be really easy, but for new players it can be really hard. The separation of two floors can make it easier to deal with enemies, however that huge gap in the floor means that you're more likely to fall off either going into the void, instantly dying from that, or taking a lot of health damage. For positioning, two on the top, two on the bottom. One person covering the left, one person covering the right. Pretty straightforward. If the top people need help, then those people at the bottom can come help, and vice versa. You may be asking, how do I get to the second floor? Well, there are multiple air vents that lead to the second floor. There's one on the left of spawn, and there's one on the right. There's also multiple different vents beside the pits that lift you up. I should warn you though, taking pits when there are enemies still wandering around is not the best course of action. You have little to no control when you get lifted in a vent, and if there are enemies there, you may get knocked off or straight up killed. Another quirk about the vents is that enemies can use them too. All types of enemies can use the lift, including hunters, so if your entire team is hanging up on the second floor, they will eventually make their way into the vents and head towards your team. One quirk about Chasm 10 is that engineers spawn every once in a while. If you see an engineer, immediately use a plasma pistol overcharge or a plasma weapon to kill it fast. Up to two engineers can spawn, so if you do not deal with the first one quick enough, a second engineer is incredibly special to deal with. Drones are pretty easy to deal with in this map, but make sure you do not have any engineers before they shield, because flying drones with shields are extremely hard and annoying to kill. Enemies that carry some sort of explosive capabilities are extremely dangerous in Chasm 10, especially on the second floor. Hunters, fuel rod brutes, and hammer chieftains have a much better chance of hitting you with their weapons. If you're having trouble with these enemies, back up into the hallway or spawn room. Enemies have a hard time navigating through those hallways, so if you get overwhelmed, fall back and either lead them to a different floor and, or grab a power weapon to deal with them. If you need to drop down to the second floor, to the bottom floor, there are little dents in the wall close to the second floor doors that allow you to get down safely without taking fall damage. Beware that enemy spawn doors are located near these walls, so keep your guard up when you're dropping down. Finally, it should be noted that enemies can throw grenades from the different floors, so if you're on a turret, a grunt or brood can chuck a grenade at you from a bottom floor, either killing you or destroying the turret, so just be aware of that. Lost Platoon's power weapons include a Spartan laser in the room next to the Warthog, two sniper rifles that are on the balconies here and here, and finally, near the main stairwell, is a machine gun Warthog. SMG pistol ammo was located at the main stairwell and two overarching balconies here and here. Two medkits are located at the bottom of the main stairwell behind the Warthog and two near the SMG pistol ammo stand. Lost Platoon is a lot like Security Zone, except Lost Platoon does everything better. Its main building will provide cover for those taking shelter, sniping raids with a Spartan laser is easier, and you got access to a Warthog. Two Phantoms will spawn in at all times and may occasionally carry a Wraith or Chopper. However, the cover from the building should help with suppressing the turrets from them. There are two spawn locations and both are near a balcony that has a staircase. I would highly recommend using those stairs consistently. They will get you into fights faster and having an elevated position gives you a very good advantage. So for positioning, there are two ways that I have seen with great success. The first one is when all four players go into the building and two players deal with per phantom since only two phantoms spawn. It's important for whoever has the Spartan laser to take down as many raids as you can, as those on the balcony do not have any roof cover and can be easily killed if you're trying to hold that position. Another way is two players get in the Warthog and two others help defend the building. The minigun is an amazing weapon and having a good driver will help a lot. While I do think the chopper is very powerful, the flexibility of the Warthog is much more helpful than a singular chopper. But if your Warthog is destroyed, then a chopper will do. Just remember to keep moving with it. I believe your biggest enemy will be the drones. If you do not take them out fast, they will swarm your building, and the top of the building is quite open, which can lead to a quick death. Use the Warthog's speed and minigun to tear them up and stick under the roof if you can. Due to the openness of the area, be careful when trying to approach rates on foot. There is a lot of ground to cover and I've been blasted many times trying to take them down. I said it in the security part but I'll say it again, if you run out of Spartan laser ammo, use a sniper rifle to take out the turrets of the raids and save it for the last round if you can. 
Windward has a rocket launcher hanging up on the far left side of the map here, and a shotgun to the far right side of the map here. There are two missile pods sitting right beside those weapons here and here. The SMG pistol ammo is located at the top of the stairs next to the doors that head outside. The cool thing about Windward is that everyone spawns in with a fully loaded sniper rifle. While there is no way to reveal your sniper ammo, there is really no need to save it. Use it on early game broods to help you get an easier first set. It should be noted that respawning does not give you a new rifle, so make those shots count. Enemies have 4 spawning areas on the map and 4 spawning areas off of the Phantom. There is a door close to the upstairs spawn on the left and right side. After that, there are enemies that can drop down from the balconies hanging down here. A Phantom can spawn directly in the middle of these two sides and can spawn on the landing platform right near the missile pods. It should be noted without saying, but it should go 2 and 2 again for your positioning. Two on the left, and two on the right side. If enemies are not showing up in your area, they move on to another area to assist. Where you should go should be heavily dependent on a phantom coming in or not. I like to stick to a higher part of the map because then I can hear if enemies are coming through the door or above me. If I do not hear anything and I see a phantom coming in, especially towards the loading dock, I will spam grenades on that platform with another friendly. If the Phantom comes towards the middle, I will either stay on the higher ground or use the middle doors as cover. Be very careful when staying on that front area. There's a Banshee that can spawn in and it will do a lot of damage if it gets a hold of you. The Banshee can be destroyed with that given missile pod or an overcharged plasma shot when it's coming in. Or you can just stay on the higher ground because the Banshee does not usually come out that far. There's a rocket launcher on the map and it should be used for things like hunters or last wave groups. Do not bother trying to hit the banshee, it's way harder than it looks. One thing I would like to note is that staying on the missile pod can lead to a quick death if you're not careful. Rip it off for that particular banshee is giving your team troubles. The power weapons on Crater include a sniper rifle on the opposite staircase here, and a rocket launcher underneath the stairs located here. A turret is in the center. Ammo for the rocket launcher and sniper are located at the spawn underneath this little rubble part here. Your SMG pistol ammo will be located in the spawn hallway with four medkits on the opposite sides of the wall. Crater is one of those maps that have both a day and night version. The only difference between the two is that sniper jackals will appear on the rooftops on the daytime, while engineers will float in at night. So playing Crater is super simple. Enemies will either spawn out of the doors right beside the first set of stairs or below where the rocket launcher is. Phantoms will drop enemies either in the back side of the map or will drop it directly in the middle area. Positioning will either be 2 and 2, 2 on the left, 2 on the right, or you can do a 1-1-1 one, one, one flex, meaning one person on the left, one person center, preferably on the turret, and one person on the right with a spare person to support whichever side needs help. You may have heard that I said one person on the turret. The turret is very good at doing a great deal of damage on Crater, because if your teammates are handling the sides, you should be able to mow the center guys down before they can land a grenade. That said, a sniper jackal or phantom turret will still mow you down, so just keep that in mind. Your movement is going to be limited if you're not holding the stairs. If enemies are starting to overwhelm you or they're throwing a lot of grenades, fall back to the top of the stairs and use that extra room to dodge. If the enemies start to overtake the top of the stairs, either fall back into spawn or loop around towards the opposite stairs. I wouldn't recommend dropping down towards the pod, but if you have to, it won't kill you. The sniper rifle should be used against broods coming from the back of the map, and the rocket launcher should be used when hunters arrive. It's best to go with the rocket launcher right when the hunters start to spawn. Once you see them, immediately rush for it. Fairly simple map, just stick to the high ground and you should be okay. Alright, Rally Point is our last map. Now, Rally Point has a rocket launcher on the left side of the map up at these stairs here, as well as a sniper rifle on the right side up at these stairs here. Near the cover outside the spawn is two turrets. Your SMG pistol ammo is located on the top floor of spawn and on the main floor near the door. Two medkits spawn on the bottom floor of spawn at the back of the door that doesn't open, and two on the top floor. The only difference between the day and night versions is that engineers will spawn in at night, and the door near spawn will behave differently. This Researching this video was very weird, so that, that was interesting to find out. Anyway, spawns are as follows. The enemies may come out of the garage door straight ahead from spawn, usually behind the raid spawn. There are two garage doors slightly to the left and slightly to the right that'll open that may spawn. Enemies may also spawn on the very left or very right side doors in the rooftop balconies. Phantoms may spawn to drop off enemies in front of any of these garage doors, on the roads or on top of the doors. 
If the Phantom lands directly in the middle, there's a good chance it'll be carrying a ring. Rally Point is a very open map, being there's a very little cover and lots of opportunities to be overwhelmed by enemies or shot by this aforementioned ring. So positioning is very important. When positioning yourself, it should be two by the barricades in the center and two guarding the very left and very right side. However, there is a big exception to this rule. If you notice a wraith is about to spawn, rush over to the rocket launcher position, hold that balcony until it drops down. You only have four shots and it should only take two to destroy it, meaning it's a good idea to not only hit your target, but stay at that balcony until you have a clear shot on the wraith. Once the wraith is destroyed, carefully maneuver yourself out of that balcony because the longer you stay there, the more times enemies will have to swarm you. If you cannot hold that position, fall back to the upper ramp beside the spawn doors until you can't hold anymore, in which case run back into spawn and try and take them out one by one. Alternatively, running into the roof balcony is another great way to avoid getting stuck in one place. Just bear in mind, if you didn't destroy the wraith, it can still shoot you through that peak crevice there. With the rocket launcher needing to destroy the wraith, the sniper rifle can be used to take out hunters and final wave brutes. The turret should be removed and picked up if drones start to appear. If an engineer spawns, take it out as fast as possible. That's all the maps for Halo 3 ODST, thank you so much for watching. If there's one thing to take away from this, it's that practicing and playing firefight is the best way to get experience and increase your chances of not losing any lives. If I miss anything, or if you have anything to add, please leave them in the comments. Thank you guys, and take care.